So you're thinking about creating your first responsive design solution for mobile e-learning. That's awesome. And I think that I can help make it a little bit easier to get started. Adobe Captivate now includes the ability to create a responsive project right out of the box. All you have to do is click on this little responsive box and it'll automatically launch a new responsive project for you. Now, you might be thinking, well, what is a responsive project and how does that work exactly? Well, responsive really just means that you're able to do a project on your mobile device. So whether you have something like this, like a mobile phone, whether it's vertical or horizontal, either way, you should be able to view your e-learning content on it. And likewise, your learners might have something like this, like a tablet, and they might hold it vertically, or again, they might hold it horizontally. And they should be able to see that content regardless of how they're holding the device. The device should recognize if they've turned it to a new direction for reading, and it should automatically accommodate that content. And so to do that, you need responsive design. You need an e-learning design that actually will change its shape and its dimensions in order to meet the needs of that individual learner at that time. Well, on the surface, that might seem like, wow, I'd have to build the course over and over many, many times, but you don't actually have to do that thanks to the tools for responsive design that are now in Adobe Captivate. The cool thing about it is that you're actually gonna be able to build interactive, amazingly engaging e-learning content, much like you did with Captivate before, but you'll now also be able to respond to the different screen dimensions. If we look at Captivate, you can see here, I have a responsive project that now has been created. And like before, you can have many different themes. You can choose from a variety of themes that are available in the menu there. Choose whichever theme you happen to prefer that you think is the one that you wanna work with. I'll choose this one right here for, for today. I'm just gonna load up the Nimble theme. And when I load up the Nimble theme, I'm actually loading more than one version of the course. Watch what happens when I go from primary to tablet and then over to mobile. I actually get different layouts for each different version of the course. And as a result, when you create content for your course, you're actually creating all at the same time. Now we use a structure which is like a parent-child hierarchy. And a parent-child hierarchy means that the parent, what, what happens with the parent impacts the children. But what happens with the children is kind of independent and it doesn't flow back up to the parent. So let's think of it this way. Um, I can call my course Cool Stuff, just like this. So I've given my course a name Cool Stuff. Now we're in the primary display, so this is the parent. When I look down at the tablet, it says cool stuff. And when I go all the way down to the mobile, it also says cool stuff. But in a fascinating twist, it doesn't work the same the opposite direction. So if I come down here and say cool mobile phone stuff on this one, because this is the child, it will not propagate back up the chain up to the parent. So it's very important that the first thing you understand about creating your responsive projects is that what goes downstream does not come back upstream. So when you're building, start with the primary and it'll all propagate down. But when you're working on the details on the individual views down the stream, recognize that those changes won't change what happens up above. And that's really quite helpful and convenient. If you think about it, when you're working down in the mobile space, you have a lot less area to work with. So if you, you're uh, like me, you're going to put in some images and things that'll fit really nicely up here in primary, but there won't be room for them down here in mobile. No worries. You can just grab that image and throw it off to the side. Captivate will recognize that you mean don't display this in the mobile version of the course. So as you're building your course content out, then you're simply going to build it as you would normally. You can use the themes and templates just as you would before, and you can even create your own custom themes and templates for your projects. To create a new slide, you just control shift V just like you would have done before. So each step is similar to what you would have done in the past. Now, I want to prepare my course so that it'll actually display well on a Android device. And by default, this is set up so that it'll display well on an Apple iOS mobile phone.
iOS mobile phones have a, a lot of stuff in the top of the browser here and a lot of stuff in the bottom of the browser here. So they actually come out in this kind of stubby shape. But Android mobile phones don't have all that extra display stuff. So I'm going to choose to view device height. And then with the device height viewed, I'm going to click on this little dragger and drag it down and just increase the height of my device overall. You can also adjust the height of the slide independently. So for example, let's say that I wanted to have a slide that just went on and on and scrolled. I can click unlink from device height. That'll separate the device height from the slide height. And now I can just grab the slide height and increase it as much as I want. So now when someone views this content, they'll actually see the content, but they'll have a scroll bar and they'll be able to keep scrolling down further and further and further. This is useful when you have lots of content you want to put on that mobile profile, but it doesn't all fit on a single screen. Now this is independent. So just because I changed the device height, uh, just because I changed the slide height here, doesn't mean that I changed the slide height on the second slide. So it's independent and you have complete control over those independent operations of the slide height. Now, in addition to that, you're also going to have some adjustment properties that you use to control where things are in your mobile content. So when I click on an item on the screen, notice that there's a new position reference here. Now, I'll encourage you to check in the other tutorials. I've gone into great detail to explain smart positioning and how smart positioning allows you to align to the top and the left and also explain how each of these relative absolute percentage positions will allow you to determine exactly how it's going to behave as you shrink and expand the size of your overall content. There are a few other things to watch for inside of the mobile space. Notice that when I choose interactions, drag and drop interactions are not yet available for your responsive design projects. Notice when I choose objects, the rollovers are not available. Rollovers, of course, uh, do not work on touch devices, so you can't use rollovers in your mobile projects. And your mobile projects will publish out exclusively to HTML5. When you finish working on your mobile project, you can preview it here directly in Adobe Edge Inspect. This is an amazingly fast way to work because you're able to simply choose Preview in Adobe Edge Inspect, and as long as your devices are on the same network as your computer, you'll see all of your courses on the devices immediately. And that saves you a ton of time not having to upload your files to an LMS or upload your files to a server, but simply being able to see them from your local desktop computer. You can also publish your content out either for devices or publish it to Adobe Connect. So why not get started today? Try and do your first responsive project.